Hello and welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur, the show that features interviews with amazing people. Hello, I'm your host, Bob Baker, and man, I was having a blast with all the interviews that I've done so far, and I've got some really awesome people lined up for the very near future, and I don't want you to miss any of these interviews. And so I invite you, actually I encourage you, I'm kind of twisting your arm a little bit, to get you to get on the VIP email list. And every time I post a new interview, I will shoot you an email to let you know that a new one has been posted because I want to keep feeding you with a steady stream of inspiration. Getting on the list is super easy. All you need to do is go to DIYCareerManifesto.com. It should be pretty obvious where to click to get on the list. And when you get on the VIP list, you'll also get a big free sample of my upcoming book called The DIY Career Manifesto. It's the unconventional guide to turning your talents and know-how into a profitable business. Because I'm on a mission to help people like you take their passions, take their talents, take what they know and turn it into making a living and making a difference with who they are and what they do. So I hope you'll subscribe. And without further ado, let's get on to the interview. Hello and welcome to another interview in the uh, Creative Entrepreneur series where I've got another amazing person on the Skype video uh, phone here, if you uh, will. I'm talking about uh, a friend of mine, Kathleen Gage. Hi, Kathleen. Hey, Bob. It's great to be here. I'm so glad that uh, that we could do this. Uh, you know, I, I, was, I was thinking here as I was preparing for this interview that you and I, I think we first actually met a little over five years ago. I was uh, organizing some panels at uh, Publishing Un University on book publishing and book marketing, and, and a mutual friend sort of put us in contact. I in invited you to be on one of those panels, and that was in L.A., if I remember right. And, and so that As was, I recall. That was 2008, so I think we're just a little over five years of, uh, and we collaborated and kept in touch and become friends over those years and so um, uh, I was really thrilled uh, you were like definitely one of the first people that I thought of when I uh, was thinking of uh, people to have as guests on this interview series so I'm, I'm so glad that you made yourself available for it thank you I'm glad I did too and you're the first one I thought of saying yes to when you invited me so there you go oh awesome awesome <laughs> I know you've done a lot of tele teleclasses and you know teaching and live speaking and all that but I don't know how many actually like video interview type things you have have done but whether it's... I've done a few, but not many. So this is uh, this okay. is new territory to me. And, and actually, that's what I'd love to talk about today is moving into new territory for creative types. Yeah. And actually, that's what uh, we I mean, we chat a little bit before, before I hit the record button that this is this is this, this interview series is part of me venturing out and expanding my brand and the people that I serve after 20 years of serving musicians and then more recently serving authors. Um, yeah, I'm kind of widening the net and going into uncharted territory, you know, heading into the uncertain waters uh, to, uh, to to try to uh, appeal to a wider audience. And so, yeah, let's, let's definitely talk about that. Um, but for, for those who aren't familiar with you, I got this. I'm just going to read like a mini bio here. And I'm going to ask you to fill okay. in any details before we get to the official list of questions here. But you're the part of the official bio bio uh, says Kathleen Gage is the no nonsense, common sense online marketing strategist, speaker, author, product creation specialist, and owner of Power Up for Profits. She helps entrepreneurs make money online. Her, cl her clients are driven by making a difference through their own unique voice, which makes you perfect for this interview series. Uh, she speaks and teaches about what uh, or you speak and teach what you believe are the core elements of a successful life, and they are accountability, integrity, honesty, and living with passion and hope. I, I love all of that. Uh, but what, what else should we know about you before we launch into these uh, questions? Well, gosh, uh, because of the Internet, I've been able to relocate to where I had a dream to live. I live on a ranch in Oregon. We have horses, dogs, cats, all are rescues. And so I'm an avid animal rescuer. Uh, and I have a life partner of 24 years. I've had my business for nearly 20 years and have gone through many recreations in my business. And that's really what I work with my clients on is how to stay ahead of the curve and not get uh, sucked into what people are saying about the economy and and to believe all the hype out there. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Awesome. Now, there's a, there's a part of this. I hope you don't mind me 
uh, asking because it's part of your bio, so I know it's public knowledge. Um, but it's, I don't know if it's everything we've ever talked about. But it says, although Kathleen is recognized as a top leader in her field, this wasn't always the case. She made choices in her teens and early 20s that took her from a comfortable middle class upbringing to a life of homelessness and being unemployable. Um, and I don't remember. I mean, I, I, uh oh, didn't I, 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 I take that out? No. I know. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was still in there. Uh, well, but, no, but, but, actually, so, so, but, but that's a great uh, story of redemption. I don't know the details, I and mean, you just can touch on it if you if you if you like but i think that's wonderful that you know a lot of people think that people who are successful were born with a silver spoon but that's actually oh, gosh, usually not no, the case no, no. at, at no. all right? and, you know and it's interesting bob because uh you myself and pookie we've had conversations about mindset and about law of attraction and about what you think you, it becomes your reality and in my teens and early 20s i had a very different uh kind of thought process than i have today and everything was about why life didn't work and i just made really poor choices i i had a very bad uh decision making process which ended me up in situations that uh were really were the complete opposite of who I am today. And, and it's interesting because what I have found is if I don't keep a check on things, I can go back into that old way of thinking of, oh gosh, life is so tough, things are hard. And, and so it's really about looking at the mindset that I have that keeps me where I'm at. But a lot of it had to do with just making the wrong choices based on what I was focusing on in life. Right, right. So that, with, with thank, thank you for allowing me to, to share that. Absolutely, and, and, absolutely. Uh, and if you heard their name Pookie earlier, that is my significant other, my girlfriend. We've been together so long, it seems like girlfriend doesn't doesn't do her justice. But yeah, we've, we've, we've spent a bit of time. Your life partner. Yes, my life partner also, <laughs> yes, as, 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 as well. So uh, great. Well, thanks for uh, filling us in on who you are and what you do. And so now I'm going to go into this list of questions. I ask every guest a similar uh, series of questions, and I, I find them to be... Uh, the best ones to sort of pull out the success habits of the people that I interview. Um, I also want to mention that you're, uh, I guess you, you in the uh, my little introduction there, you said that you're the owner of Power Up for Profits. Is, is that also the name of a new book? Yes, it is. Yeah. As a matter of fact, oh my gosh, I have one sitting right here. It's called Power Up for Profits, The Smart Woman's Guide to Online Marketing. And that actually just came out. It's a brand new book and it's a culmination of about probably a good 15 years of online information that I've gathered, that I've used, that I've taught my clients, uh, some of the best success stories with clients that I've put into this book and really how to use the internet to gain visibility in front of your market. Awesome. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this when I publish it, the, it actually, you're, you're, it's part of a, because uh, there's like a launch campaign or whatever, yeah, yep. celebrating the, the release of the book. And I will actually have a link to it in the show notes under the video uh, if you're watching it on the, at the DIYCareerManifesto.com. And if you're watching it at some point in the future, you'll be able to find it on Amazon. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I'm sure it'll be a great book. It's geared for women primarily. I'm sure men could find value in it too, but, but that, that's yes. a, an example of niche marketing, you know. Well, let me explain how we came up with the subtitle because it was my publisher and I who worked on the subtitle and we did our research and nothing had ever been written by a woman for women in internet marketing. And we thought, you know, we could get a corner on the market with that. And even though I do have men in my market, the majority, about 80% are women. So yes, in fact, it would be valuable for men and yet our target market is primarily women and men who are very open to reading a book written by a woman. Fantastic. I've always heard that women buy the majority of books. That's another smart reason. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. To, to do that. Um, so let's get on to the, to, the, to the question. So looking back on your success, you know, all your, uh, the, the challenges you've, you've overcome and this, built, this business that you've built, um, if you could list like three key things that were responsible for where you are right now, what would those be? working my butt off and I mean that sincerely you know I think a lot of times people buy into all this hype on the internet that you can press a button and make thousands of dollars and yes that is possible but you have to lay a foundation so I think one of the greatest keys to my success has been the willingness to work really hard for what I want another key has been to have a vision of where I want to go it's like what do I even want to accomplish because most people what I have found is a great many people they fly by the seat of their pants and they don't have a plan for where they want to go. So that's been another important key. And a third element is who I surround myself with. And that really goes back into what we were talking about, your thoughts and your, your focus. 
If you don't surround yourself with the right people, and by the right people, the people who will raise you up in what you're doing in life, uh, you, you really can get sucked into negative thinking, negative talk, and negative actions. So it's like the yes. Yeah, so, so the people that you surround yourself with, who you hang out with the uh, the uh, most. Uh, there, there's that old uh, thing I've heard many many times about your income is quite often the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Same thing, I guess, with your attitude, with your level of success. Absolutely, of and and I belong to a mastermind group that all of us have invested very heavily to be in this mastermind group, and you have to be at a certain income level. And some people say, well, that's not really fair, and it's like, yes, it is. Make the money invest the money and you can be a part of the group. Right. Cool. Well, yeah, so let me just yeah, f- follow up. So, so it's basically, so, so one was like work, taking action. The, the other part was having a vision for where you want to go with your life and then having a plan to uh, uh, attain that goal. And then it's who you surround yourself with. Let me just get, kind of ask you a, a little bit about that. Cause what I have noticed um, to me, like the twin uh, things that need to come to, to, to together is the thinking part, but it's also the doing mm-hmm. part. And I find that people, right. I mean, maybe you, you, you can tell me if, you, if, you, if you've seen the same thing. Quite often the people that struggle either do too much of one or the other. Like there's a certain group of people that love to, to yeah. affirm and vision, and, but they, they're not taking a whole lot of action in the real world. And then there, are a lot of, then there are also people that sort of get busy and are really aware of where they are, but they don't have like, like a vision of, they just kind of go right. through the emotions. So maybe explain the importance of having those having a balance between those two those two things well you know in a, in a nutshell you really uh, articulated that in that you can't do too much of one or too much of another you have to have a balance with it and the first place to start is really to sit down pen to paper and write out what's your vision for your life and for your business um, I'm a real strong believer in visioning boards uh, I actually the the ranch that we have right now with the acreage and all the animals that was put on a vision board long before we ever had any of it um, um, and I love wearing Western boots, so I put pictures of a whole bunch of Western boots, and that's mostly what I wear are Western boots. And so it, it really was coming up with the vision of what I wanted and then breaking it down into bite-sized pieces because what can happen is if we go into action without having a vision, we get overwhelmed. Right. And it's the overwhelm that really puts us into paralysis. And so it's breaking down your vision into doable steps and manageable steps and having benchmarks as you arrive at that benchmark okay what's the next step and then the next and the next and this is really where having good mentors and good colleagues comes in where you can bounce your ideas off of another person one of the challenges that i see with a lot of creatives is they they create in a vacuum and they try to create everything on their own and they're afraid of admitting that they don't know and believe me that has been a challenge for me it's like People think I have it all figured out. Well, I'll tell you, the more I figure out, the less I figure out. And so the best thing that you can do is create that vision, put a plan together, but then have people that you can bounce your ideas off of. Yeah, and that's a consistent theme that I've heard uh, through this, all the, the, the interviews that I've done so far is that uh, that importance of having a mentor, having a coach, having a mastermind uh, group. And but but just in case for those people that maybe do have uh, the finance, not have the, the currently have the financial resources maybe to invest in a mastermind group. Um, I know for for me, my first mentors and coaches were were authors. You know, I, you you go to the library or the bookstore or whatever, uh, and you can read them in in a, in a books. Uh, I guess the uh, the next step up with what about that is it reach out to somebody locally who's doing what you want to do and invite them out to lunch i mean are there other ways to sort of go up that ladder of oh of absolutely and absolutely and yeah. you mentioned one which is go to the library if you're if you're short on resources go to the library and check out books by the people who have achieved what you would like to achieve and really pay attention to what they're saying. Because a lot of times what happens is we can read about another person, we can uh, hear what their strategy is, and then we say, oh, easy for you, but difficult for me. Um, and so it's really important that you you really um, pay attention to what they've done and say, if they can do it, then I can do it too. And um, so that would be one. Another is look for group, um, what is it, meetups? Oh, yeah, There's yeah. meetups in your local market where it doesn't cost you anything in most cases to go to these meetup groups. Go to the groups and get involved. Join a Toastmasters group, join association groups where there might be a nominal fee to join, but 
at some point you have to be willing to put skin in the game. It, it's like you cannot expect to succeed without making some kind of an investment of time, money, and resources. And, and this is where I do see a lot of people get stuck. They say, well, I just don't have the money. And if people could see what the really successful people have invested in their business, mm -hmm. this year alone, I'm putting over $100,000 into my business. That was more than I made in the past. And you know, in my first year in business, I think I made about $20,000. And so you grow into that, but you have to be willing to stretch yourself. Great advice. So let's move on to the next question. And so we talked about a lot about the elements of success, but let's talk a little bit about uh, some challenges, either business or, or creative challenge that you faced. And the, the real thing that we can learn from it is, is what you did to overcome it and, well, and what you learned from this experience. Well, I think one of the greatest challenges that creative types face is finding the right resources to help them build their business. And I think uh, initially we think we should be all things to all people. We should wear all the hats and nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, one of the challenges that I've noticed, not only did I go through this, but I see this with a lot of people, is they don't really run their business like a business. They, If it was a brick and mortar business, they would have a whole different set of rules that they would be going by. Well, you've got to take some of those rules and you have to apply it to, if you will, an online business. And most creatives are running their business by way of the internet nowadays. And so you have to look at, are you taking money out for taxes? Are you, uh, do you have an accountant? Are you uh, paying yourself a paycheck? Do you have the resources to accomplish what you need to accomplish? So one of the greatest challenges is admitting that you need help, knowing when to bring on help, and with that, knowing that you're getting the right help. Um, the, the, I ran it, I, I actually went to a, an event recently, and I was talking to a woman who was an artist, and she had some beautiful artwork, and I said, do you have a website? Because I'm not gonna buy your artwork here, but I'd love to see what you have. And she goes, well, it's in production. I said, oh, really? When will it be done? She goes, well, my nephew said, and I said, okay, I'm going to stop you right there. I said, I'm an internet marketer and I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I'm going to give you a bit of advice. May I give you some advice? She goes, oh, sure. I said, don't hire your nephew. Don't think that your nephew is going to get it done. Hire somebody that really specializes in web design. You're going to get your website up a lot quicker and people will view you as a more professional artist. So one of the challenges is trying to do it all ourselves, thinking we have to do it all ourselves, and not hiring the right resources when we need to. Another thing you need to look at, and this is something my current mentor is really a stickler on, hire slowly, fire fast. Mm. Hire slowly, fire fast. Really important because we can go through situations where we have somebody working for us and we, find, we realize they're not a really good fit. And instead of saying, okay, I need to get rid of this person and get somebody else, we say, well, you know, I'll do it next week or I'll do it next month. That can really be a thorn in your side because there's emotions involved, there's money involved, there's your business involved. So you really need to have, you need to know how to bring on the right resources. That would be one of the challenges. Um, another challenge would be not having balance in your life, working all the time. Mm working 24 seven, you need to have some downtime. And believe me, I'm not the best at that, but I, I do work on it. Um, over the weekend, I took quite a bit of time off because it was, it was a time for me to just spend with family and really recharge myself. So this is something that I see a lot of people don't do is they work way too hard and then they start resenting their business. So that would be another challenge. Uh, another challenge would be um, not getting the training that you need. You, you always have to be trained in specific areas and finding the right resources to train you. Just because somebody says they're an expert doesn't mean they're an expert. Do your due diligence before you buy their programs, before you hire them as a mentor, before you invest time and money. Make sure you're investing in the right resources and the lowest price is not always the best deal. Right, right. I, I know that I'm guilty as charged as far as the working <laughs> thing, but I think that's sort of a curse of all people that go into business for themselves. Especially when you work from home, where you got your home and personal spaces combined with your work area. But I know it's a challenge because I often, in fact, I had this sort of exchange with a friend of mine on Facebook uh, recently where he was basically saying, 
that I use my my Facebook profile or whatever to promote my business, you know, and my and my artwork and all that. And in fact, you mentioned that your your friend or was somebody that was a you met a, an an artist, and people actually asked me about the art on the back wall here. And actually, these are all paintings that I've done. And yes, I created my own website at poprockartstudio.com. How'd you like that for a little sly plug? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I decorate my own office with my own or my own back back backdrop. But um, but I but but, I, but it's like what I do in business is very personal. I'm sure it is for a lot of people that go into business for themselves. So like, so I think, like I was telling him, it is me. This is express. This is my personal life as well as my business life. But there is a danger, I guess, in not you have to, in, in separating work time and downtime and make sure you're, yeah, right? It's hard to have that separation, but there are periods like, okay, if you work with your spouse or partner, you have to have rules of where you can talk about business and where you don't talk about business. For example, at the dinner table, you really need that downtime to enjoy dinner uh, in the bedroom. You know, that's another one where a lot of business partners, it's like they continue business in the bedroom. That really is a surefire way to ruin a relationship. Right. But as far as Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, putting our personal and our professional, there is a hard, it, it's hard to separate in many instances. For example, I have private groups in Facebook, and the only way that somebody can be a member of a private group is if we're friends on Facebook. Well, my family members are friends too. And so I can't separate the two 100%. Some people can if they're not doing business online, but those of us who do business online, it is hard to make that separation. Cool. So we've covered a lot of good. Uh challenges that self-employed creative entrepreneurs have and and uh, hopefully there's some good advice here for people to grasp onto and use in their lives absolutely <laughs> all right let's move into this uh next question which is is kind of like uh, i guess another way to say it is if, if i knew then what i know now uh but i like to sort of set this question up as if you could go back and have a conversation with your younger self and you can choose you know what what age you know you you would have yourself at maybe at the start of your uh, entrepreneurial Per, per pursuits and basically if you would give that younger Kathleen advice on well, these are the things that you should do exactly the same because they worked out really well for me and they're gonna you know do those a, a again uh, and also the, the second part of that we'll go we'll come back and, t and tackle these one by by one but this, the second one would be these are time wasters don't waste your you know just avoid doing these because you're not going to get anywhere with them and then the second thing is what would you add into the mix earlier or add into what you did that maybe you didn't so so again talking to your younger self what would you recommend that you do exactly the, the same the thing that I would recommend I do exactly the same is start a business and really have it be an expression of who I am. Now, the things that I would do differently is not be so afraid of who I am. And and actually, one of the reasons that I ended up homeless in my, my 20s was because I was so afraid of who I was and um, I, I thought there was something wrong with me. And so because of that, I started hanging out with really um, kind of shady characters. And I mean, there's a whole story behind that that I'm not going to go into. But everything that I, as I look back on that period in my life and many periods leading up to now, it was the fear of who I am, my own power, my own greatness that, you know, it's our God given gifts that we have that really forced me to make the decisions that I did back then that were not the healthiest decisions. So I would say to my younger self, don't be afraid of who you are. Be, be proud of who you are. Be willing to express who you are. And the platform that I, I stand on now and what I work with my clients on is pull back the curtain, get out of the closet, because we all have closets that we live in, right. whatever closet that may be. It could be the spiritual closet. It could be the political closet, the sexuality closet. It could be um, the creative closet. And we, we tend to be afraid of who we are. And if we are truly... A, Somewhat of an overused word is authentic, but if we are our authentic self and we really embrace who we are and we're comfortable with who we are and we're proud of who we are, then we don't have to shove anything in anybody's faces. We just have to live who we are and let that be an expression of the gifts that we've been given. So that would be the main message is don't be afraid of who you are and stand in your power. Uh, another thing that I would tell my younger self is get mentors sooner because I waited far too long to get the kind of mentors I have today. And a lot of it was the very excuses that I hear people say, oh, I can't afford it, I'm not ready. When I do X, Y, and Z, then I'll do it. And what you have to do is you have to do it and let everything catch up to it. 
that's awesome. So what were some time wasters? Like, like I know there are a lot of things, like a lot of preconceived notions that authors and musicians and other creative people have that, that, I, that they think they need to do that uh, those of us who have been doing this for a while realize, no, 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 you really shouldn't go down that path. What were some things to avoid? If you spoke some of the technical yeah. stuff that I tried to learn. I am not a techie person at all. Even though I'm, I'm a master at internet marketing, I am not a techie. And I remember one period where I thought I had to learn all about RSS feeds. It was like I had to learn everything about it. And I spent days and days and days trying to figure it out. And I got more confused the further I went into it. And finally, I went to a friend of mine who was very knowledgeable at RSS feeds. And I said, what are they? And she explained it to me. And she goes, Kathleen, you shouldn't be trying to figure that out. What you need to do is hire somebody. So that definitely would be a time waster to me is trying to figure out technical things that I can pay somebody to get to the end result a lot quicker than I could possibly get there. And they get there a lot faster or better than I could. Right. Because I know <laughs> I've mentioned this a number of times. My new book that I'm working on is called The DIY Career Manifesto. Mm-hmm. And DIY stands for do it yourself. Uh, and so, but it, it doesn't n- literally mean that you do everything yourself. It's more of a reference to the, a career that you uh, make that's, that's authentic, as you, as you mentioned, to who you are. And, and you, it's self created. But as you progress with it, you definitely get other people in involved especially in those areas that you don't have strengths in um but by the way i i will yeah i i've i've i've, I've learned the tech technical side of things too and just for those who, who may not know uh, and rss is basically uh it's a it's a it's a it's a technological ability that allows people to subscribe to either web pages or like blogs or to podcasts and that so that these things are automatically downloaded right for for you for those of you who are still going what is that that they're talking a, a about but it's a but yeah, you really Real need simple to know syndication. How it works. Yeah. yeah. Well, and see, that's the thing. Nowadays, things are so easy compared to how it was 15 years ago. I mean, they many of the programs that we use nowadays are so user friendly. But there's some of the back end stuff. You don't need to know the functioning of it. You just need to know that it works. Right. And you know, another um, I would say uh, time waster for me was when I was doing things that were repetitive tasks that I could pay a VA, a virtual assistant to do. I have a virtual assistant that's in the Philippines and I pay him seven fifty an hour to do article submission. I write the articles, he submits them, I write the tweets, he puts it on Hootsuite. So I have him doing the things that it's much more cost effective for me to pay him seven fifty an hour. And then I have a VA that I pay seventy dollars an hour for my shopping cart. So it you know it ranges, but it's worth it to me to have my VA who does the shopping cart understand the whole process of a launch that I, I all I know is I'll map it out and then I give her the map and I say okay now this is what I want done she takes care of it it costs a lot less to pay her seventy dollars an hour than for me to spend weeks and weeks and weeks trying to figure it out and then totally messing it up right and the third, third part of that question was just yeah what would you add into the mix earlier you already mentioned mentors uh, I have another one yeah, okay what Product creation. And and actually, I, I do a lot of product creation now. I've been doing product creation for several years. But that would be something early on that I would have started packaging my knowledge uh, much sooner than I did. I, I really got into intensive product creation probably about seven, eight years ago. And now I can create just by mapping it out, I can create within a very short period of time where early on, I, I remember the very first cassette. So I'm going back a little while. Oh, yeah. um, the very first cassette I created, it was an hour long cassette and it took me probably a week of recording time to get it down to an hour. It was crazy. And so I would have started sooner and I would have gotten the right training for it too. So I really want to emphasize to people, get the right training and in, put time aside for your training. Don't just buy a program and hope that you're going to get it through osmosis. You have to plan out your, your learning time. Yeah, I'm so glad that you, you're actually one of the first per- people that have mentioned uh, this. But there's so many, like I have so many friends that either they teach meditation or they teach, they have some sort of knowledge and they quite often uh, deliver this knowledge in a what I call a non-passive form. So they're doing live workshops or teleclasses or whatever where they have to physically be present, but they're missing the boat. You know, I had one um, a person who does all these workshops, and and she, for years she's been saying, "Well, I really need to create a CD." You know, mm-hmm. so that which not only does it allow you to um, inspire or, or or serve people when you're not physically present, but it's also a passive revenue stream, right? And so a lot of people just well, don't take, know- the, take the time to, to put it together. 
Well, actually, when I found out the value of having products and having that passive revenue stream, and it's in my book, I start my book out with the story about how my father was diagnosed with brain and lung cancer. Four weeks later, he transitioned, and then my mother became very ill. They had been together nearly 61 years, married nearly 61 years, and I became her primary caretaker. My sister and myself, we shared responsibilities. And it was during that time, had I not had products to generate the revenue in my business, I could not have responded to the caretaking needs like I was. Um, I was able to be there for my mom an awful lot, and two years later, she passed on. And I have no regrets about that period in my life that I couldn't be there for my mother. And it's because I had product, it's because I had passive income, and that's one of my driving forces now is to really work with people to set their business up in a way that if they want to take time off, they can, or if they need to take time off, they can, because I can't even imagine what it would be like to have that kind of a calling that you are torn in answering. Right. And just just to clarify for people, uh, when we say products, I mean, it's a whole wide range of things. Yes. But it could be physical books, ebooks, could be audio recordings, you know, that, that people can download or send to them on a CD. That could be uh, multimedia like uh, webinars or video training. But it's basically taking your knowledge and and using different modalities that I guess the ones whatever the ones that appeal to you most to communicate that information uh, to people who, who are willing to pay for it. Absolutely, absolutely. And one myth I want to shatter for authors, because I, I believed this myself when I first started writing books, is one book is going to make you rich, one book is going to be all you need, and you're going to get discovered, and you're going to live happily ever after. A book is a means to an end, and products, you're right, there's e-books, there's e-reports, there's teleseminars, webinars, MP3s, uh, CDs, DVDs, books. It, it's a combination of all of those that will create the abundance that you're going to have in your business and help you to get your message out to serve your market right the more people yeah the, and the more <laughs> products you have in a, in a line of them like the most successful even fiction authors in the kindle store they have a at least three books out in a series you know and so it's this multiple product related products that really leads to the prosperity absolutely that, that, that we're talking about here so great advice all right, Kathleen, we're headed into the stretch here. There's a few more questions. And, and one is, uh, I know you and I, I'm sure, are both fans, uh, or even though we're authors ourselves, we author also are voracious readers. So if you can name at least one book uh, that changed your life, what is it? And explain why. Well, I'll tell you, the one book that stands out among anything I've ever read is a book called The Magic of Believing by Clyde Bristol, I believe is the author's name. It was written, I believe, in 1938. And it was during the time that I was really on a downward spiral in my life. And I remember going to a garage sale and I had very little money at that time. Uh, I was working a minimum wage job, had a little tiny apartment that I could barely afford rent on. And I went to this garage sale and I saw this section of books and I've always loved to read. As a kid, I loved to read into my adult life. I'd love to read. And I saw this one book with the title, The Magic of Believing. And something about it just pulled to me. So I went over, opened the book, and it was 25 cents, something, you know, some ridiculously low price. But for me, that was a lot of money at that time. A quarter was a lot of money at that time. And so I bought the book, and I started reading it. And I was just, I, I was enthralled with the information. But what was interesting is it was all about your mindset. It was all about the beliefs you have, what you focus on, and that ties into the actions you take. And as I was reading it, it was believable to a point. And I said, yeah, that's good, but for other people, not for me. I don't deserve that. So it really helped me to identify those areas where I didn't feel deserving. And I read it over and over and over. And then I started applying the information a little at a time. And that was a huge turning point for me. Another book was Your Erroneous Zones by uh, Wayne Dyer. That was another one during that time period that I found. And so during that time period, I started searching out books that really helped me to rethink the way I was thinking in life and really look at what my beliefs were that tied into my actions and definitely a game changer. Even to this day, I could read the book, The Magic of Believing and get something powerful out of it. I've probably read it a good 15, 20 times in the last 10, 15 years, but this was going back probably 30 years ago when I first read it. Right. There's a, there's, a, there's a phrase I'm sure you've heard about. It was when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. You Absolutely. Know, it's funny. Absolutely. You never know when you're going to get that inspiration. When you're ready, you're open, you're, you know, you're needing something in your life. And there's that book, even if it's, well, 25 cents, uh, you know, uh, you can be inspired 
you know, any best 25 cents I've ever Absolutely. seen. Absolutely. <laughs> it's funny you would mention your erroneous zones because that was the first personal development book that I ever read when I was like 17. I was in like in my junior year in mm-hmm. high school or something. And when it came out in the seventies and Wayne Dyer has put out many, many books since then. But, um, but that was what that was, that was one that really started me on a path of, it was the first right. time that I realized, Oh wow, these feelings of insecurity are not just things that are happening to me outside of my control. I'm actually choosing these thoughts. Uh, mm-hmm. And therefore, if I can choose the thoughts, I could, I could dictate the course of my life. You know, it's just a very in, an empowering. It's the first time I'd ever really, you know, the light bulb went off about the mindset right, right. part of it. And so, uh, so let's, yeah. So I, um, you know, we talk a lot about tactics. You know, with this, this entrepreneurial journey. Although you have mentioned the mindset many, many, many times. So I, I kind of a new question I've added to this list is what truly motivates you to do what you do. I assume it's not just to pay the bills or to sell so many books or what, what, whatever. If, if I were to pose that question to you, what, what motivates you to, to run your business the way that you do? It's only the money. No, yeah, just kidding. Just money. kidding. No, actually what motivates me as I shared when, when my mom was ill and I was able to be there as her caretaker, a lot of my products during the time that my mom was sick were created at her hospital bedside. I mean, she was in ICU. She was in uh, long-term facilities. I mean, it, it was a crazy, crazy difficult time for me. And so I had my laptop and I started creating the products. And so something that motivates me is to give people the freedom to never be stuck in their life. Because as as I was going through that period, it was uh, right around 2009 on into 2011 that this all took place. And a lot of people were yelling, bad economy, bad economy, and they kept repeating that over and over again. Well, what was interesting is I was so isolated in my mom's care that I didn't pay attention to that and I wouldn't engage in those conversations and my business actually grew during that time. So when I hear people say, oh, bad economy or I can't make money because of this, that or the other, and it's mostly because they're not willing to work for it, I I have very little sympathy for them or any empathy. If, however, life challenges show up and people are really stuck, I love working with people like that to show them that there is a different way and that they can have the kind of business that they dream of. One of the things I really want to point out, though, is when people say you can have it all, I think that's the biggest load of crock I've ever heard. You cannot have it all. You have to make certain choices. There are, it's like, okay, you can have your cake and eat it too. If I have my cake and eat it too, I get big hips. It's just a fact of life. If I want little hips, I don't have my cake and eat it too. I have the cake, but I don't eat it. But (laughs) quite seriously, the point being is there are certain choices that we have to make in life. And when people say, oh, you can have anything in life that you want, not necessarily. There are certain things that we can't have because we're not willing to work for it. Yet there is a lot that we can have that we don't have simply because we haven't put a plan into place. So I really want to emphasize that point with people is that there is a lot that you can have, but you have to make choices and there are sacrifices that you make. And it doesn't have to be bad. Sacrifice isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a choice that you've made. Right. Like, for instance, like back in my teens and early 20s, I, yeah, my, my vision was to be a rock star, be a full time musician. And there was a few years when I did that in my 20s. But then I discovered that I started publishing a local music newspaper as I learned more about what it really took to be successful mm-hmm. as a musician. And I realized, you know, I don't think I really want to be on the road that much. I don't think I want to make this, you know, the, the sacrifice that it would take to be to be to do music full time but I really kind of like this teaching and this writing and this journalism thing which led me to be an author and so I didn't stop playing music I continued Pookie and I yeah, we perform and practice and re- rehearse every week with our choir and with this, mm-hmm. and as a, a duo and so I'm doing probably playing music more than I have since my 20s but it's a sideline labor of love type of thing uh, where something else so yeah you do have to make choices and there was something else that you said that uh, escapes me now um, but uh, maybe I'll come back to it <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I think of it here um, and so I know as we're recording this uh, you are launching the new book Power Up for Profits and so again there should be a link in the show the show notes to uh, for people can learn more a, about, about that but as you look to the future I know you're always thinking ahead you got big vision big vision what would you uh, as mark victor hansen likes to say what's your big hairy audacious audacious goal well one of my big hairy audacious goals is i have an event coming up in october in portland oregon and uh, actually anybody who gets the book are, they're going to get tickets to the event it's a three-day event and i want to see that room fill up with about 200 people that's one of my goals and i want to work with the kind of people who really want to make a difference in the world and i just want to keep 
expanding my message out to those people who are ready to receive it and just keep doing my life's work. That's really what I see as my purpose. And to be clear on the the the, the whole process that all I need to do is show up. There, there's an expression I learned many years ago, suit up, show up, do the next indicated step. Have the vision of where I want to go, but suit up, show up, do the next indicated step and do it with gratitude. Because when we can do things with gratitude, everything opens up for us. And if we forget that, then it becomes a drudgery to show up to life. So uh, my main goal is to do everything with gratitude and remember that I'm here as a vehicle to share a message. That's 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 awesome. And one thing I've sort of observed about you and is is that you've got this great like business sense. You know, you've got the the tactics and the whole business mind, but you also have this sort of uh, maybe, I don't know, spiritual and personal. You know, you make it personal, uh, and that combination is really uh, it's I think what works for you. I mean, I, I assume you Thank observe you. this about yourself too. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, and I have to say, I have to give my partner a lot of credit for keeping my feet really on the ground because I, I've been a gypsy a lot of my life where in a moment's notice I could pack up and go to Israel, for example. I went there in 1983 for six months. I lived on the West Bank and then shortly thereafter I went to Mexico for nine months and I just was a, a world traveler. And uh, today it's about really keeping my feet grounded but also knowing there's something beyond on what the ground I stand on is. Right. I do remember the thing that I was going to mention earlier. Uh, uh, even though I've been entrepreneurial and self-employed at different stages of my life, um, uh, b- back when I was really had made the decision to move forward and pursue a career as an author, speaker, teacher, was right a- around the beginning of the millennium or whatever. So it was around 2000. There was like, remember, there was a big, uh, um, uh, the the big uh, tech bubble. From, oh yeah. You know, Thirteen I years a- <laughs> ago, and then 9/11. You know, in 2001. And so a lot of people were saying, "Oh, this is a horrible time to start a business." But I kept, you know, even through all of that I kept plowing forward and I had huge for three years in a row I was like doubling my income every year during the supposedly bad economy time and so that's that's yeah when you mentioned that earlier I I have a a similar experience yeah just turn off the news is pretty pretty, probably the best advice there absolutely and and part of it too is having the strategies that will help you to get there and realizing there's an ebb and flow to everything you do it's not you're not going to hit the payday every single day so you have a long-term vision of what what your business can do. Right. And I think, you know, a lot of people, they get really caught up in if they don't make money today, then they failed. It's like you have to have this plan of where you want to go. Absolutely. So finally, uh, where can people find out more about you online and connect with you and all your wonderful activities? Well, thank you for asking. And they can go to powerupforprofits.com. That's powerupforprofits.com. Very cool. And you also have KathleenGage.com. You've, you've got your... I do. Your, don't, that your... all leads to Power Up for okay, Profits. All... We, re, we rebranded about a year ago from Street Smarts Marketing and everything leads to Power Up for Profits. Very, very cool. It sounds like that's going to be a brand that will serve you well. Um, thank you. Well, thank you again for making the uh, making the uh, time and sharing your wisdom and many years of experience. And uh, I just really appreciate it, Kathleen. So thanks It's so been much. delightful. Thank you, Bob. All right. That's it for this episode. I'll be back real soon with another interview in the Creative Entrepreneur Series. So long for now.